All right, guys, this is Ashwin here. In this video, we are going to solve the problem Sansa and XOR. Sansa has an array. She wants to find the value obtained by XORing the contiguous subarrays followed by XORing the values thus obtained. Determine this value. So here, uh, this is the subarray. We can able to get it uh, using this array 3, 4, 5. So these are the array. We have to uh, do XOR operation on these results. After doing the XOR operation, these are the results. Again, we have to do the XOR operation with these results. And when we do the XOR operation, output is 6. So this is like a straightforward approach, but here also we have to see a pattern or else uh, finding the subarray itself will take a longer time. And again, after that, we have to do a XOR operation for these values means it will uh, take more time and it will definitely exceed the time limit. So we will try to find some pattern uh, in this uh, input. So this is uh, one example. Let's also see the constraints. So here we have like uh, five test cases and the range can go up to 10 to the power of five and the values can go up to 10 to the power of eight. Even with uh, 10 to the power of values, uh, there will be definitely a time limit uh, if you go for a traditional approach or a brute force approach. So here uh, we have two examples. In the first, uh, we have two test cases and three numbers. So here one, two, three, the result is two. And for uh, four values, uh, the result is zero. I think for uh, even number of values, uh, the result will be uh, zero. That is uh, one pattern I have observed before. And apart from that, for uh, odd number of values, if you can able to see uh, for test case zero, uh, these numbers are repeated again and again. So let's consider this one, one, two, three. So one is occurring odd number of times and two, two is occurring uh, four times as you can able to see and three is occurring again three times. So we ha already know the theorem like a x or a is zero. So if it is occurring a one number of time, this two is automatically goes to zero. So we don't have to do a x or operation. And even for uh, one, if it's occurring two times means so we don't need to do it uh, again. So we just have to do it only once. And uh, even for three, we just have to do it only once. So we will take the index like even index. So this is zero. This is one and two. So we will increment the loop by two and we will only consider uh, the even index that is starting from zero and uh, we will do the XOR operation for that. So that is the logic I'm going to use. Uh, that's the pattern I also observed. And uh, here this is another test case. And here also we have uh, odd number of values. And again, we'll be following the same pattern. So these are the result. And for the array with the even uh, length, we have to check for the condition and we have to return zero. So that's the simplest way to do. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we already got the pattern. Now let's start coding the solution. So now we got the array. Now for the base case, if len of array modulus to equals zero, that is if the length is even means we will return zero. So that is the base case. And apart from that, we have to calculate the result from the XOR operation. So I will initialize a variable called result equals zero. And after that, we have to increment the loop by two. So I will create a for loop now for I in range of, it will start from zero and it will go up to the length of the array and we will increment it by two. So this is the loop condition. Now result XOR equals array of i. So this will loop through the elements from uh, one and three. And uh, in this case, 98, 12 and 52, like that it will uh, go through the loop, even if you have uh, more number of uh, elements in the array. And finally, we will return the result. Return result. So you can able to clearly see uh, we are just using a simple theorem that is a x or uh, a equals zero. So that is the theorem uh, I'm using. If both the values are same, it will be a zero. And we also seen uh, several problems like this. 
That's how we can able to figure out this logic. Let's run the code to check whether it is working or not. See the sample test case has passed successfully. Let's submit the code. And we have solved all the test cases. And that's it guys. As I already said multiple times in bit manipulation, you just have to figure out the pattern and uh, get a simple solution out of that pattern. That's how you can able to uh, easily find the solution. Hope you guys uh, like the video. Stay tuned for the new videos.